Hello again, folks. I am your friendly, fuzzy, and fat host, Blunty. And we're continuing our talks about the PlayStation Vita today. And finally, we're getting on to gaming. The purpose that the device was built for. It's one and only reason for existing in the first place. Gaming. We're also going to be talking about media playback, which a lot of you have asked about as well. That's video playback and music and all that kind of stuff. So, let's get to it. Hockey dokey. First off, let me apologize if you can hear that louder than usual background hum or kind of noise because later on in this video I'm going to be showing you remote play and that necessitates my PS3 being turned on. And when my PS3 is turned on, so are its fans. Which are not half as enjoyable as my fans. That'll be you guys. Well, some of you. Some of you haters, but who cares. So let's talk about gaming, shall we? Come down to my gaming page here. I've got a few different games installed here. Uh, if you've been following this series from the beginning, you'll know that the retail games I purchased on the game cards, that would be in these little guys, uh, Ridge Racer and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Super Duper Edition Mega X Director's Cut. <sighs> Some games have names that are far too long. So, while I talk about the gaming, I'm going to have to uh, turn the lights down and... Uh, uh, so we can get uh, just isolate this screen a little better and avoid uh, reflections and stuff and have to reposition slightly so I can actually try and see the screen while I'm playing. So, as we're doing this by the way, as I'm showing you some actual gameplay, uh, please don't feel the need to leave a note in the comments telling me how much I suck at any particular game or whatnot, or I should have been doing this or I should have been doing that or that's not how I'm supposed to play the particular game and I sh ugh. Just shut up. I'm only demonstrating these games to you. I'm not actually trying to really, really play them here because I'm trying to play them through the viewfinder of a camera while keeping my hands deadly still on the top of a desk so the focus remains and it's all very, very difficult and uh, hard to concentrate and there is a slight lag between what the camera sees and what it displays on the back of the screen so my reaction times are a little bit off so can it? I'm tired of hearing about that stuff every time I do a game related video. You just whine about it. Anyway. So, as you can see, the graphics look stunning, frankly. They look really, really good. They're really clean. I mean, I've talked about this in the, when I was talking about the screen, but the graphics in the game itself, uh, they run at very smooth frame rates. Even, even these launch games. I mean, normally the launch games are not the best the system ever sees. In fact, I don't think a launch game has ever been ranked amongst the uh, top 10 games of a system by the time the system gets a couple of years old. Well, maybe a couple of Nintendo ones, but that's only because the Mario games are particularly good and they work on those for years anyway. Anyway, so... Uh, as far as the graphics quality, in a relative world, they look PS3 quality, basically, or Xbox 360 quality, or that sort of generation of gaming quality. I qualify that as being perceived as, because the screen resolution is, of course, much, much lower than what you're playing on your TV. So while the PS3 has to render at 720p or 1080i or whatever it's doing, it has to do a lot more grunt work to get the same looking picture, but because we're playing on a 5 inch portable screen, the resolution is lower, so the graphics chips have to do less shoving about of the numbers to make it look good. But in a uh, sort of direct comparative world where you're sitting sort of, you know, 3, 4, 5 meters away from your TV in 720p, and when you're holding this thing up, you know, a foot away from your face uh, and its resolution, they look damn good. For all intents and purposes, high def gaming, really. I mean, it's not technically, but it looks really pretty. It plays really pretty. Everything is really slick and smooth already. And so by the time uh, we get into sort of uh, a few generations of games down on this thing, they're going to be looking spectacular as the, as the developers learn all the little neat tricks and twists and secret passageways they can make the thing do it, uh, do what they want it to do. And, you know, it always happens. I talked about this a bit in the video where I went over the hardware, but the game controls, when used in-game, are actually really nice. The thumb pad in the fighting games and stuff, I never really got a really sore thumb. I mean, of course, this thumb got sore at long gaming periods on a little plastic thumb pad, but it's actually quite ergonomically comfortable. Same thing goes for the buttons. They uh, never irked me in any way whatsoever. The thumbsticks, I'm still getting used to the thumbsticks. They're a little more sensitive than I expect them to be, but they work really, really well. I've never slipped off them accidentally while I'm in the game. Um, when it comes to the touchscreen functions, uh, 
none of the games I've been using have been using it really well thus far is about all I can say. The touchscreen works brilliantly. It's very sensitive, very, very responsive. It's uh, a match for, you know, any of the best smartphones out there as far as uh, that kind of stuff goes. But the, its use in the games that I have access to so far doesn't thrill me. Um, I have tried Little Big Planet with the touchscreens, and that was a lot more fun than the games here, but, you know, it's there. The rear touchscreen is the same story. Very sensitive, very responsive, but I haven't seen it used in a way that makes sense yet. But it's still nice to know it's there, and it works properly. Now, when it comes to how long you can play, and this is a question I get over and over and over again in this whole series of videos. People want to know about battery life. About the only sensible thing I can say about the battery life is it never let me down. Even if on paper it's the same as the 3DS, and I was disappointed by the 3DS, and I'm not disappointed by the very similar battery life on the Vita. I think it's because the Vita is a much bigger feeling experience. The screen is bigger and brighter and more impressive. The games are bigger and brighter and more impressive. The games seem more complex and it's throwing around graphics at a much higher clip and everything looks bigger and better and louder and brasher and I think that's why even though the battery life is about the same I was I wasn't disappointed in the battery life from the Vita where I was from the 3DS I know it sounds like a weird thing to say and I promise you I'm not being a fanboy about this I love my 3DS the bits uh, particularly now it's got some really awesome games on it but you know in a, in a real world thing I'm happy with the battery life of the PlayStation Vita. I'm not going to be gaming from dusk till dawn on a single charge or anything like that. I mean, you wouldn't expect to. Although I do hear rumours that Sony are bringing out some sort of clip-on external battery attachment for it anyway. So I don't know. All I can tell you is the battery life seemed fine to me. Alrighty then, I believe I have now rambled precisely long enough to show you a variety of gameplay footage from a variety of different types of games with different types of graphics so you can draw your own conclusions as to how they look in the real world. Well, sure, camera on YouTube anyway. So, let's get down to the media side of things, shall we? A lot of people have asked, can you play music while you're playing a game? That is, can you play your own music while you're playing a game? So, let's find out who I've got some tracks loaded up already. Yeah, from Mammal, a now defunct Australian band. And uh, we'll go Mr. Devil, I think. So there you go, you can hear that playing. So we'll come back to the main menu, as you can hear, it's still playing. We'll go back to Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Music is still playing. Let's go back into the game. And if you listen quite carefully, you can hear my music playing behind this game. And when I quit out of this game, it was playing its own music, so you can switch it on the fly. I'll spam the touch here. Bye -bye. There you go. So you can hear. You can indeed play your own music uh, in game. So we'll stop that there. Now you notice here, you can actually start and stop the music from the. Uh, from the interstitial page itself so you don't have to go all the way back into the main player to start your music or stop it or uh, indeed skip tracks or whatnot so that's quite good now when it comes to the video side of things whoops up and down we'll load up here and load up a video so oh, that's right here we go again of course you can't play videos while you're in the middle of the game so you can't you know play a video game and then uh, now I'll pause here and uh, we'll go out and watch a video maybe maybe a walkthrough video or something if you're like uh, you know cheating I guess <laughs> but no you have to quit the game sometimes you can save games at any particular moment sometimes you can't Marvel vs Capcom 3 I'm halfway through a fight I can't save here so I'm just gonna have to quit and live with the uh, live with the disappointment of losing that awesome round so we're on to videos here now first thing I'll tell you is with some videos it um actually let's uh i'll just turn down the video there so that's not too distracting i've got an episode of diary here that i ripped from my dvd collection when i was going on a trip once i loaded them all up on my ipad now as you can see here well you might be able to tell that uh, this is a four by three uh, episode it was you know pre-widescreen days but it's a bit squished in on the playstation video this plays perfectly fine on my PC or indeed my iPad or my iPhone or any other device I put it on really but this particular file is uh, all uh, all squished in so the uh, the Vita doesn't quite play nice with a 4x3 
kind of image. There may be a pixel size issue here, square pixels versus rectangle, but if you're into video encoding, you know what I mean. But if you're not, then this may slightly frustrate you because you might not know you have to re-encode your videos to try and fix it because indeed there are no uh, options to fiddle with that. You can fiddle with your audio options. You can uh, just have left and right, left or right. Uh, you know, if you can only hear out of one ear, I guess. Uh, continuous playback, so you've got loops, and you can set your language preferences if you've got files with subtitles. Let's come back out of that. And uh, now there is a another quite popular question that um, that I was getting asked on many of the videos I made about the Vita about the video playback capabilities, and it is the issue of video formats. So, unfortunately, though, I am disappointed to report that the PlayStation Vita is every bit as limited and crippled when it comes to video playback as is the PlayStation Portable, or indeed, the PlayStation 3. It's, for all intents and purposes, and for all I could find out, exactly the same limitations as regards to file type and, and container file and audio encoding and all that sort of stuff. So, if you have created your video files to work on your other PlayStation devices, they'll work on the Vita. If, however, you're like me and uh, your video files are in all kinds of formats, depending on where you get them from or how you created them, then you're shit out of luck, basically, and you have to convert them, like I've had to do this one, so I could do this funny video in video playback commentary section thing. Now, finally, let's get on to the last thing I'm covering in this video, remote play. Now, hopefully this will work for me because, you know, it doesn't always work first time. If you're familiar with remote play, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass sometimes. So I've got my PS3 set up, it's waiting for a connection. Oh, and there we go. And uh, of course, unlike the Vita, PlayStation 3 interface is designed to use with the controls, so I can in fact use the menus here, just as I would on my PlayStation 3. Unfortunately, uh, in these quite early days of the uh, of uh, the Vita being out and not even being out in the Western countries yet, you run into this quite a lot. This content cannot be used during remote play. Okay, that's fine. Let's uh, try a game. Killzone 3. In fact, Sony did demonstrate Killzone 3 working on uh, remote play, and they claimed that all PS3 titles will be playable via remote play, except for the PlayStation Move titles, I imagine, because clearly that wouldn't work. You need the controls, because this has all the physical controls that the PlayStation 3 does, including the six-axis center, by the way. Um, so let's try it. Um, oh, no. This content cannot be used during remote play. I have updated everything. I've patched it. Uh, I'm running the same PSN account on my PlayStation 3 at the moment that I am on this. Uh, everything's synced up and properly done, and no, it just won't work. Let's try... Um, Let's try Scott Pilgrim versus the World. A uh, no. Okay, Super Stardust HD. No. Okay, what else have I got on here? Motorstorm Pacific Rift demo. No. Um, and uh, King of Fighters demo. No. Uh, maybe this. This is a PlayStation One title. Oh, look, the PlayStation One title is loading. Okay, there we go. PlayStation Lego booting up with that familiar sound from our, from my youth, or at least younger days. Come on. Yes, yes, come on. Now, first thing I'll tell you is PlayStation 1 game on this screen looks a little bit fuzzy. But you'd expect that because it's quite a low resolution thing going on. Oh, come on. I don't have time for this. Alright, there we go. Title screen. Everybody's Golf 2. A nice, simple, low-demand PlayStation 1 game. Oh! 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 I didn't even touch anything and my entire remote play connection was terminated. Killed. Destroyed. And in fact, I will find right now that uh, I cannot reconnect without going back to my PlayStation 3, quitting out of the remote play uh, waiting mode and restarting it altogether. So... <laughs> All I can tell you now is I tried a whole bunch of games, downloadable games, disc-based games. I've tried a bunch of different functions and video playback and all that kind of stuff. And almost nothing works with remote play right now. I expect that will change in the very near future, or it should change in the very near future when Sony get their act together and start patching stuff up properly. And, you know 
commit to, the, to their claims that I'll be able to play any PlayStation 3 game I like via remote play on this thing, but um, right, for right now, it's, uh, it's broken. It's really, really, really broken. Um, broken so severely that it's useless right now. I haven't got anything of worth to work. PlayStation, or oh, life with PlayStation 3 worked, but who the hell uses that? Stupid weather channel bullshit. <laughs> Alrighty folks, so that will wrap up this series of videos about the PlayStation Vita. I know, I know, there is stuff I haven't touched, there's stuff I haven't looked at, there's little bits of software and certain little ancillary, tertiary features that I haven't really examined. Yeah, things like uh, near friends, group messaging, party, they all, I can't, I just can't test those properly because I don't know anyone else with a PlayStation Vita at the moment, quite frankly, so, but, uh, you know, there are other places you can go to find out what they do and, uh, you know, near's finding out who is near you and doing what with their PlayStation Vita and what trophies they just earned or what game they're playing and stuff like that and group messaging is what you'd expect it to be your friends list is what you'd expect it to be and party group chat thing is what you'd expect it to be and, but I feel like I've looked at all the, the basics in enough detail for, to give people a, a good idea about their purchasing decision and as far as I'm concerned you know there's some hit and misses the cameras are a bit dodgy the browser's a bit dodgy the other stuff's really good and the gaming is superb you know and you got to base your own decision on that. Please, for the love of God, don't leave comments saying, Oh, should I get this or the 3DS? Make up your own damn mind. That's why I do these videos, to inform you so you can make up your mind. I'm not here to make your purchasing decisions for you. Because what I think is the best isn't what you think is the best. I just present you with the options. Okay? So just show a little thought process. You go, well, this one does that and that one does that. I prefer a device that does this and this and this. That one does that and that and that better than that one does that and that and that. Although that one does this and that one does that. I think I'll spend my money there. See how easy that is? It's just a simple thought pro process. I'm not here to spend your money. If you want me to spend your money, just send me your money. I'll spend it on stuff I like. That's how it works. So, hopefully these videos have been useful. I probably will come back to the Vita uh, in the near future, because it still hasn't launched in the West, of course. Uh, so I may come back and talk about some other things. I may do a frequently asked question video, because there is a lot of questions in the comments that have been frequently asked, so I should maybe cover those in an entire video. But for now, I'm moving on to some other types of video. I've got a couple of camera reviews coming up, and some bits and pieces, and some accessories, and uh, probably a rant here or two. But for now, that's it for the Vita stuff. So, thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.